Uh, boys and girls, you know, this detector's on sale. Sharpshooter's not telling you to buy Jack Diddley. It's a little windy out here. I'm going to talk loud. We're going to look at this menu system a little bit on this detector. Moving that call around, there's iron down there. Smashing the button and he clears the screen. You notice it rebuilds. You don't hold this button. I'm holding it. See, it don't work. So you just touch it and it resets. Now, if you're sweeping that call, it's going to build back in that screen if there's something on that call. So you don't hold. Clear screen. I'll show it to you here. Clear ID map, you don't hold that feature to get it to work right on this machine, okay? Let me turn the camera off. Camera back on. Now I've set the top level up. Three fingers, you see it there? Sensitivity boost. Watch what happens here. Now I'm back in the detect screen, all right? If I hit this button, you see that sensitivity? It automatically jumps. Hit it again, it jumps back. Now you can still go here and manually adjust it and I'll do that. Let's turn it up to 24. If I hit this, see what it does. So instantaneously on a weak signal, you could use that feature, especially deep turf coin hunting, open field relic hunting. You probably wouldn't use this feature much in a high iron sight. Camera back on. Now I've, now I've selected external speaker on all. Speaker mute. Alright, you hear the external speaker. Get that, turns off the external speaker. Now the detector's still working, and if I had wired headphones on or powered wireless, I would still hear whatever I'm hearing down there, be it iron tone or non ferrous tone. Depending. Camera back on. Now I've selected the display backlight. But you see it here. See it there? Display black light selected. What can you do with this? See it right there at my thumb? Beach hunters will find this very useful. Where there's sparse targets, you can run your screen at lower light, conserve energy, you get over a target, you keep mashing the button and you get your screen bright should you want to look at it. It steps and steps. Okay, camera back on, I've selected recovery speed, see it there, again where my thumb is, that's the placement I have put it for demo purposes, toggle out, go to detect screen, watch what happens, see that, push, push it, push it again, push it again, the recovery speed is changing, it will cycle up and go all the way back down, to, go all the way to 8 and then start back at 0. So it goes up. Again, you can be running this machine and you may get a clip signal running speed four. You hit that button there at speed five, it may come in better. Or five may sound a little bad and you may hit six and it may sound better. Camera back on. Now I've selected frequency. Again, where my thumb is at. I'm going to toggle back to the detect screen. Notice what happens. I'm in multi-frequency. I'm in a modern trash site. Maybe I get a, I don't know, maybe I get a 67 in the meter of this machine or zinc and penny. Modern trash site, I hit that button, go to 5 kilohertz. I may see some higher ID, huh? That may tell you, for example, you've got a higher conductor being masked more by lower conductive trash. Now, if you keep hitting this button, it steps all the way through to get back to multi IQ plus. Camera back on. I've selected the horseshoe. Okay. This can be handy to use. You see where I've put it. What that does is that takes your discrimination out of the machine. But your iron upper ferrous limits and lower ferrous limits remain intact. So you will hear an iron tone using that. If it falls underneath your upper lower ferrous limits. Okay, 
This can also be used when using discrimination to expose some masking situations, meaning you may see some lower ID or a lower tone be heard. That would suggest possible masking. Camera back on. I've selected accept reject. Okay. Sweeping this zinc and penny. I hit that button. See what it did? Gives a little reject segment that running vertical. Disclaimer: You must not. You cannot be in all metal. Horseshoe button can't be engaged using that. I don't believe. Camera back on. Noise cancel. Just hit the button. It's going to do its thing. Hold the button. You also can hold the button. Camera back on. Ground balance. See it right there. So now I can hold this key. By the coil. Okay. All this does is keeps you from having to go into the main menu like so. See, there's ground balance there. Okay. Camera back on. You see a vibration setting under general settings there. Okay. Hit the left or right arrow key. You'll put a slash mark through that. It's now working. Vibrate feature. Now, if you use this along with the audio, you're going to use some more current out of your battery, okay? You use what you want. I turn mine off generally. Camera back on. Search mode. See it there? A little magnifying glass. And what this does is this is going to allow you to step through the programs. Alright. Now, I have a favorites key set up right here. And it goes to... All-terrain low conductor. See that star right there? Now, see that all-terrain low conductors while I'm here? I have picked that to be my favorite program. I'm going to hold the pencil. See what it says down there? Favorite. If I hit the right or left arrow key, it puts a slash through that. If I slash it and go back, it's no longer my favorite. See there? It's gone. If I go back into all-terrain low conductors, hit the right or left arrow key and put it back. Now hit my star, my favorite. There it is. See it? It's got that little star by it there. Camera back on. Flashlights. See it there? We're back in the detect screen. See the flashlights. So if I hit that, you get that bright illumination like around it there. See that? The flashlight's on right now. Hit it again. Turns it off. Camera back on. General settings. You see me down there at reset. If I hit the right arrow key, confirm factory reset. Hit the top right. Do it, which I'm not going to. Hit the reverse button. Back and out. Camera back on. Ferris indication. Hit the right or left arrow key will turn that red. So if something falls under your ferrous limits, it should be red. However, there are situations, uh, non-ferrous critical situations, mass where this could stay red and fool a user. Generally, iron in the open, it will be accurate. Alright. Let's see what I've done here. It's on. See if I can find some iron here. Well, if I can find any or not. There's a bunch of coins. Okay, I still have the Ferris ID red selected. Horseshoe must be in though to see this. See that zinc and penny in that nail? There's the nail. There's that zinc and penny. Okay. 
I turn this off, you have a red line versus the numeric indication being red. Take the horseshoe off. You're only going to see black with never a red line and never red numeric in the meter of this machine. You see that? Underwater boost in general settings. That's exactly what it's for. There's a warning under here. I'm going to hit on that. See what it says? Boost underwater headphones used only with Mind Lab waterproof headphones. High volume may harm your hearing. I've not checked this. I don't have any underwater headphones. Alright, camera back on. I was going to conclude the video. This detector, just like the Equinox series made by the same company, MindLab, is external battery use capable. Using the charge cable, plugging in right there. See the user's manual. Never take sharpshooter's word for it. Especially when it comes to precautions using this equipment. Hope you enjoyed.